What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Investor T. Claus. My name is Tavi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. So before we get into the ChargePoint news today, let's start by giving a big shout out to the Virgin Galactic team on yet another successful flight. They completed Galactic 4 on October 6 with flawless execution. They are now prepping for Galactic 5 with the exact flight window still to be announced in the coming days. But the key piece of information you may have missed here is the fact that this last flight provided confirmation for the design and maintenance objective of the future Delta-class spaceship. This now allows Virgin Galactic to move forward with starting manufacturing of the necessary tooling, and it also means that the production tooling for those ships is on track to start later this quarter. That is big news. Now on to ChargePoint, another disappointing week for the stock with a massive loss of 20.19%. Let's talk about what happened. We have some changes in the analyst ratings and I'll wrap it all up with what I'm personally doing as far as buying, holding, or selling. As always, this isn't to be taken as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is my personal approach to investing and a thought process behind it. I'd recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information I'll be sharing. Drop this video an early like if you haven't already and smash that subscribe button. Those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. The charge point stock just can't seem to catch a break from a disappointing earning call a little over a month ago to rising bond yield rates at the macro level, adding pressure to non-profitable growth company. The stock lost 40.69% this past month alone and widen its year-to-date loss to 63.90%. That's massive. We have a new all-time low of $3.39, and with a once all-time high of $49.48, this essentially means that the stock has lost over 90% of its value since 2021. I know, right? That's rough. Now, the reason the stock was hit hard this week, it's because they raised more capital, a total of $232 million to be exact, they did so by raising $175 million from a previous arrangement with institutional investors. This was, if you recall, additional funding they could tap into, but did not need to up until now. The remainder, $57 million, was raised by issuing new shares during Q3. But frankly, regardless of when these shares were issued, this is $232 million worth of freshly issued shares hitting the existing tradable supply. Now, the ChargePoint CFO stated in the press release, and I quote, we are pleased to secure $232 million in funding this quarter, which supports our stated goal of adjusted EBITDA profitability in the fourth fiscal quarter of next year. These raises and our recently announced $150 million revolving credit facility are consistent with our announced capital strategy to bolster our balance sheet. We have no plans to access the ATM." End of quote. And so really, it's not so much that the cash raise was a huge surprise for investors, after all, ChargePoint closed out the last quarter with $269 million on their balance sheet. They reported mounting losses and revenue is projected to slow to close out the year. The issue here is the same as always. Cash raises with at the market issuance of shares are dilutive to investors. So many simply choose to sell and scoop up more shares lower after the dust settles. Yes, this isn't ideal, but there are two key points to highlight that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, they no longer expect that I'll have to further dilute investors and the cash raise on hand should be sufficient to support smooth operations on a go-forward basis. Number two, they reiterated the end of next year to turn profitable. This arguably puts them in a more robust position financially to execute their strategy. So despite the market responding negatively to the cash raise news with a strong sell-off, the analyst ratings distribution in contrast has improved. The overall rating is still a strong buy, but we now have 12 buy ratings instead of 10, three whole ratings instead of two, and still no sell ratings, right? And that too is important to pay attention to. The high end of the range is unchanged at $17, and the low end dropped to $7 from previously $8.25. The average consensus price target dropped a bit more to now $10.91. Even so, this implies an incredible 217.15% increase from the current level and an over 5x return if you look at the top end of the range. The thing is, even if we were to only climb back to the bottom of the range at $7, 
that's still a double up on your investment looking 12 months out. Remember, these price targets are 12 month projections. You can't argue that that's definitely tempting, but what does that mean for me specifically? I have to start with buyers beware. We have one more rate hike still penciled in this year. The success Tesla has been gaining with more and more automakers partnering for access to the supercharger network has added more near-term pressure to charge point. The stock has remained pretty much consistently oversold for the better part of this month, and the stock simply hasn't been able to catch a break for the aforementioned reasons. Now that said, it is due to bounce back. No stock stays indefinitely oversold. And here's the thing, right? This most recent cash raise basically gave them the needed buffer to kick things into overdrive from an execution standpoint. If you add the cost-cutting measures they've implemented post-earning call, we should see an improvement in the balance sheet and overall performance in the coming quarters. As I said in my last video, this is not to say that the stock couldn't fall a bit more before turning around, but personally, I believe that despite the slowdown in EV sales, momentum will return. There is a significant need for increased infrastructure pertaining to EV, and this is still the best, most reliable provider of level two charging solutions, both for public and commercial usage. The last time we spoke, I had one share. I'm now up to 20, still minimal. But now that the cash raise is completed, I intend to start adding more aggressively. Yes, I understand that the stock could fall further near term. However, ChargePoint is nowhere near being at risk of going bankrupt. If anything, it's more likely that they get acquired given their market cap of only one and a quarter billion dollars, okay? I also believe that next year will be a way more favorable macro environment and right as ChargePoint reaches profitability. So to me, not taking advantage of the lowest entry point to date and building back a solid position with a 5x potential return on investment is a risk I'm simply not willing to take, especially because I believe that the product and services this company provides are absolutely needed to support the EV transition. But on that note, that is it for me today. Keep it short and sweet. If you found value in my content, click the like button and share with others who you think could also benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe, it's free, and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. I'll be back on Sunday for my weekly video. Till then, you can keep up with me here on Twitter for crypto and NFT related news. Thank you for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.